So now I would like to show you another video of our society. So here is the video. I would, I would request you all to please unmute yourself. Unmute, please. Mute yourself. Yeah, thank you so much for, so please, I will request you all to please keep yourself on mute. So now I'm sharing the another video. सशक्त नारी से है सशक्त समाज की पहचान स्त्री की उन्नति पर ही राष्ट्र की उन्नति निर्भर है नमस्कार मैं हूं आपके साथ निहारिका महेश्वरी हेलो एवरीबडी आई एम निहारिका महेश्वरी एंड आई विल बी मीटिंग ऑल ऑफ यू टुमारो एट फिफ्टीन अप्रैल 5 पीएम बाय एन इवेंट ऑर्गेनाइज्ड बाय स्ट्रजन वेलफेयर सोसाइटी एंड द टॉपिक विल बी द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक कीपिंग इन माइंड द करेंट सिचुएशन राइट नाउ द टॉपिक विल बी रोल ऑफ मास मीडिया इन एक्सलरेटिंग वेमेन एम्पावरमेंट जी हाँ नारी सशक्तिकरण इस पर बात होगी कैच यू टुमारो एंड इफ यू हैव एन रजिस्टर्ड Yes please click on the link below and register see you tomorrow bye Hi guys I'm Ranjana and uh, I'll be connecting to you all uh, via this webinar organized by Sajan Welfare Society on a very important topic that is a role of women in mass media Good evening and welcome to all my wonderful viewers I am Mrs Rana Khatri Kandan just coming live on 31st May at 3 p.m. just at Shrijan Welfare Society on a corporate webinar just for you, talking on the myths what entrepreneurs can break to become successful. Also talking about stereotypes. Do watch me. Look out, coming soon. I am Dr. Abhay Kumar, Vice Chancellor Pratap University, Jaipur, Rajasthan. I am very thankful to Shrijan Welfare Society for having invited me as a guest speaker. on 21st june from 11 am to 11:45 am on a very important topic the new national education policy 20 sujan sanstha ke tatvadhan mein virtual samvad ke madhyam se aap sabhi ko janne sunne evam sikhne ki aasha mein main aap sabhi se dinang 30 jun 2021 ko aapke sammukh upasthit hu राखी है 
नेम इज सौम्या एंड आई एम फ्रॉम इंदौर नमस्ते मेरा नाम सौम्या है अरविंदो माई नेम इज निकिता दास नमस्कार हमारा नाम निकिता दास एंड आई एम फ्रॉम वेस्ट बेंगल everyone my name is yamini andar ki namaskar na peri yamini and i'm from hyderabad namaskar mera chhota hai i am rubhi priya manakam em peru rubhi priya i'm from tamil nadu hi all i am ashmi namaskaram and i'm from ashmi and i'm from pune thank you hello my name is kaushik kumari namaste mera naam kaushik kumari hai and i am from rati jharkhand hi i am nisha manakam em peru nisha i'm from tamil नहीं और क्या Gitanjali please unmute yourself Okay Am I audible to everyone now Yes you are audible And my video is also visible to everyone Yes Okay so hello everyone I am Rashi Sharma from Surgeon Welfare Society and I hope all of you who are watching me from their homes are happy and healthy With this I would like to add an empowering quote A woman with a voice is a definition of a strong woman Now I would like to tell you a little bit about our society so the main objective of our society is to provide social economical and educational empowerment to women and to make them self sufficient in terms of their career and identity with this i am very excited to share with you all that we have two guest speakers today and both of them are very intellectual in the terms of their career and identity now they will talk on two different topics and each topic is related to women in legal industry so our first guest speaker is advocate kritika agarwal she did ba llb honors from nliu bhopal then she did mla from oxford university uk and currently she is working with, as an advocate at supreme court of india and she will talk on a topic let like how law is an instrument of change in society in light of autonomy of women and also how to their rights and such as change in legal age marriage of women now 
our next guest speaker is Abhipipsa Namika. She did her graduation in 2017. Then she practiced in Supreme Court of India and Delhi High Court. She also practiced in National Consumer Redress Dispute Commission along with other high courts and tribunals. And currently, she is working with Law Seco as principal associate and she is heading the litigation department. And she will talk on the topic like what can be the best career option for women in legal industry. So heartily welcome to both of you, ma'am. And Thank you, Rashi. Yeah, and it's our pleasure and honor to have you here. So I would like to invite Kritika, ma'am, first to share her thoughts and views on the topic. So over to you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Rashi, um, for the introduction and uh, thank you to Strajan Welfare Society for organizing this webinar and also, of course, for inviting me for the same. Um, you know, so my topic or, you know, the topic that I'm going to be talking about is how law is um, an instrument of change in this society. Now, um, of course, I mean, you know, as a lawyer, there is a lot of change that you can bring in the society through your profession and how you use law um, for the same. And that is something that I want to talk about. Um, now, so it, it's kind of a chicken and egg kind of a situation in my opinion, you know, when we ask that, okay, what came first? Did the chicken come first or the egg come first, right? Um, it's the same with the change in society and, you know, whether law reflects what the society wants or whether um, you know the society does what the law says. So that is what the question always has been. Um, having said that, while we may not have a definitive answer as to you know which what is the uh, you know what came in first in the sense that um, you know does law answer the society's needs through changing or through uh, you know through change or whether it's the society which adapts to a change that is brought about by law. Um, but having said that, the, the idea is that both keep changing, both keep evolving, that is law and society. So recently, um, you know, maybe all, a lot of us here might have read about how um, the legal age for marriage of women has been proposed to be increased from 18 to 21 years. Uh, now, of course, you know, there were, there were, there, there have been groups who have been in opposition of this sort of a proposed change. And of course, there have been groups that have been in support of this change. Now, the question is that why, um, the question is that, you know, why should this, this, this be a decision that law takes? So why do we need a change? And the very simple answer in my view is that, uh, you know, society has changed from a time when, uh, you know, from a time when marriage is what gave a lot of girls their independence, their freedom, or, uh, or, or, you know, I mean, marriage was something which yeah, was so an integral and essential part of yeah. a girl's life. At that time, maybe, yes, getting married at an, you know, earlier age in life made sense. But increasingly, you know, well, with, with more education and, of course, more education for women, okay. with uh, more financial independence, marriage may not be something that, uh, you know, that has to be age dependent. And in that sense, um, increasing the legal age of marriage is, is just fair. Um, and also, why have a different age of marriage for men and women? You know, what's the reason behind it? Yes, maybe, you know, earlier on, it, it earlier in the society it made sense for uh, girls to be married off earlier uh, because they did not have to be financially independent or educationally very well qualified to get married because they were not the providers in the family it was mostly the men who used to be the providers so okay i mean you know men might need a certain additional time period to actually become um, financially independent so that difference in age must have catered to how the society was but with time that has changed and with that change um, the law also needs to reflect that at the same time um, you know if the law reflects it then there are there are certain 
segments of the society and there are there are quite a lot of segments in the society that also need to accept that change so for instance if the legal age of marriage has increased from 18 to 21 it will kind of you know ensure that if there are girls who do want to study further after completing school um, their families may not have a reason to say no you know because if they have to wait until 21 they might as well educate their daughter so at least in bits and pieces there are things which will change if the law provides or provisions for it so law is also an enabler in society as much as being um, you know as much as reflecting what the society is or what the society wants so and and uh, with time like for instance there have um, there have been laws which have been um not very um you know i mean today we feel that those laws were regressive for instance the sati um, you know like the practice of sati today it seems regressive because why should the girl or woman or any female why should she have to you know jump into the funeral pyre if her husband passes away but yes when it did exist there was a certain reason behind it because at the end of the day at that time in society it was the man who was taking care of the female and if the man has died then how is the woman supposed to take care of herself which has changed you know since many years it has changed so abolition of sati is a law which reflected that change or in some ways which brought about that change you know so sometimes law is enabling women to be more independent to be uh, in control of their lives and sometimes it's just reflecting what the society is again you know something like dowry today we look down upon uh, upon dowry of course uh, you know it's illegal and everything but at the time when the concept of dowry was there it was because the girls were not really um, given a part of the uh, immovable assets of you know of, of of that family so that used to go to the son so what does the daughter get so daughter gets movable assets in the form of dowry so that she doesn't you know she she has some assets with her when she goes and gets married um but then that practice maybe it originated from a good place or maybe it originated from a need in the society where it kind of became um, yeah, a problematic practice over the years and then the dowry uh, you know prohibition of dowry act came in to curb that malpractice again female uh, infanticide that is also something which um, which yes perhaps at, at one point in our society um, you know the preferred child the gender of child used to be male because that is how the family would be um, you know the name of the family would be continued forward and you need a, you know you need a son to actually take care of whether it's your land it's in an agrarian society or whether it's a business or whatever um because women were not given that uh, you know i mean women were not in the public space so to say correct so then they are not the ones who are actually taking care of land or business and those kind of things um and it made sense then you want you know that you would want as a society you would want to have your next of kin primarily as a male because then uh, that's how your family kind of um you know continues in in that in within the society but then over the years when there has been more education there has been more independence there has been uh, more initiative by women also um then that then that obsession over having a male child or preferring a male child becomes a mal practice because then you're actually um you know it it then it becomes like a problem in the society and then there comes in the law which obviously prohibits female infanticide and then there is a law which prohibits finding out the gender uh, in india why in other societies you know you're allowed to know the gender of your you know the child that is about to be born because maybe that problem doesn't exist in those societies maybe because they have already moved a little ahead um, in terms of them being more progressive than india in certain ways so um to to tackle these problems it's important that law also enables um this kind of a change in the society and there are there are lots of areas you know as i said there are lots of areas wherein these things have to change and are changing um and it's a two way it, it it's a dialogue it cannot happen just from one direction you know it just cannot be from 
the legislature that changes the laws because the women also have to ask for their rights now for instance um again more recently there has been a lot of debate and there has been a case going on around marital rape in india so again i mean if it's a problem and if women think it's a problem they have to speak about it and they have to demand that okay this is something that's not acceptable or this is something that we want um you know i mean and and not just in india you know even in the western societies there was a time when women weren't allowed to vote there was a time when women weren't allowed to um enter the same educational spaces as women um, so then there came in female only colleges then there then so and then from moving to a female only college to a uh, you know to a college which allows both men and women to study together was an act of progression so even for western society so society in general it's not about india or any other country um, in particular but society in general has to progress and that progression comes with your thought you know there are different things which may which may have seemed um okay at a point in time but today they may not be okay or today you may want something else so um i mean that is what in my opinion you know that is what the role of law is and the role of law is also should be that so sometimes the law may not like the law that exists at this point may not allow for something or may not say something but as a lawyer you know if there is an issue and if you think that you can argue in uh, favor of a decision which may not be 100% as per what the law says but it may lead to some change in the law i think that is also um, you know an important role of what a lawyer does in the society so for instance um the the decriminalization of uh, section 377 of the indian penal code which um, in simpler words is about uh, the rights of homosexuals okay now that is something which the courts actually uh, struck down that law which was obviously not as uh, relevant in today's times and in today's society even if the legislature did, legislature did not so here it was the lawyers who actually pushed forward the case of people who wanted a certain kind of representation then you may have representation um of transgender people in government um, jobs you know so again i mean the the law may not say it but then the the advocates of law which is you know which is people like us have to take up these kind of causes to actually bring in that change in society that okay you know i mean there there have been instances um, such as um allowing uh, you know uh, or, or giving people the right to not mention their gender or giving giving people the right to mention that okay if, you know if they don't identify as male or female and if they are a transgender then this is what they um, yeah, you know that, that this is what uh, that the form allows them to enter that choice so these are the changes that we need to bring in another example i remember you know reading, uh, seeing uh, some time back about a celebrity parent in india um he was traveling with his baby then at the airport the uh, the changing room for a baby was only in um, you know was was attached to the female washroom now if it's a man who who is tra- who's taking his kids around then obviously then he can't enter the female washroom then how does he you know how, how does he take care of his child if he needs to change um, you know if he needs to use the changing room for the child so these are instances because this is a change that we are seeing in society so it's not just the women who are taking care of the children it's also the men who are taking care of them then there are all, then we are also seeing um, men wanting to adopt kids so you know irrespective irrespective of whether they are married or not married um so then what are they supposed to do is 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 you know just raising or taking care of the child is it, should it remain the uh, you know forefront of a woman no that's not the case so when the society is changing when things are changing when people want those changes then they have to advocate for those changes and the law also needs to move around those uh, requirements and it kind of needs to reflect what the society wants um so different people different representative groups for different kind of issues are what bring about that change in the society um and i think that is what 
that that is that is what the role of not just a lawyer but somebody who's advocating a change in this society that is what the role of those people is um in terms of um, you know in in terms of bringing about that change in terms of voicing out the issues that they face now if the celebrity father um, if he had not raised this issue you know not it's not necessary that somebody might have thought about it at the same time if somebody doesn't raise an issue you will never know that this also is an issue which could exist because it may not be your issue but you may be in a position to push for it you know to push for change and that is what um, you know whether you are a lawyer or whether you're just advocating for some sort of change um, or whether you have the ability or capacity or the reach to influence um, change in the society in a positive manner and in a more inclusive manner the idea is that the society should become more inclusive um so and and that is what it is it's not about progressive regressive whatever it's just more inclusive and it's taking care of um the different points of view of different segments of the society whether it's men women um people who do not conform to a gender binary or you know whatever it is but the idea is that it should be a more inclusive society and that's the kind of change that um you know law also needs to bring in as well as us as um citizens as individuals as people we need to think about and talk more about um, so you know the constitution will remain in the book if we don't understand what it really stands for so for instance um you know i mean the constitution says that uh, there there are certain articles yeah article 14 or you know, 15 which talk about equality which talk about equal opportunities um in employment but they will remain just um you know just 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 some provisions of law if we as society do not really um you know believe in them and do not really walk the talk as they say so for instance um like you know there was a time when uh, women were not allowed in um, active military or armed forces services right um, they were just relegated to the short service commission etc and then there came a change because women wanted to be in the uh, armed forces and that is when the change came in because they started asking for that right you know they said that when we are performing when we are doing what is required in that particular job then we want that position as well and that is when you know people started noticing that okay women do want to be in the in the armed forces and that is when things started changing it, it took time but it did happen and it's happening in fact um so recently i saw this um, this short telefilm it was from pakistan and it was about the first female um, lieutenant general of the uh, armed forces of the army there she is she is a doctor and uh, of course you know there must have been no doubt about her capability and you know her abilities and qualifications and everything um, and and in that telefilm you know they showed that uh, when they were about to select who should get the promotion to the post of lieutenant general there were obviously there were people in the deciding committee they were all men the people who were in the deciding committee were saying you know that why do we need to bring in this lady um, but then there was somebody who did take a stand and who said that um if she is capable if she is you know good and if she is i mean not just good she's brilliant and she is capable she fits the bill then why should we not promote her um so of course i mean law is just one thing you know law says it but it's the people who have to think that we need to bring in this change and that we have to accept it um and you know and make it a part of of our society so it's not just the law but it's also the society that has to start thinking that okay this is this is uh, you know this is the change that we should um uh, sort of bring in from our side and we should we need to so it's kind of as i said i mean it's it's uh, as much as it's a chicken and egg situation but it's also something that and both have to walk hand in hand it just cannot be that the law is there but the society refuses to change or if the society wants to change but the law is not letting uh, that change come in in a legal manner so both have to work hand in hand and uh, and and it's kind of the role of um, both i mean you know people who are professionally lawyers as well as people who are just 
advocating for changes in the society to actually take this mantle um, forward. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing your thoughts and views on the topic. And now I would like to introduce you all with the board members of our society. So firstly, Mrs. Lalita Singh, she is the president of Sajan Welfare Society. Then Mrs. Archana Singh, she is the assistant professor and secretary of Sajan Welfare Society. Then Mr. Vishpar Pratap Singh, he is an advocate of High Court and founder of Sajan Welfare Society. So now, thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing your views. Now I would like to invite Abhipasha ma'am to share her views and, uh, views and thoughts on the topic. So over to you, ma'am. Yeah, Ruby, please can you uh, help Abhipasha ma'am to unmute because you are the host now. Hi, everybody. So there was kind of a commercial. So thank you, Kritika, for your amazing views. It was really good to listen to you. So first of all, I would request everybody, if you could just unmute yourselves when you can, or if you could turn your videos on, it would be very helpful because I really don't want to go on a monologue. Lawyers have this very annoying habit of going on those, and it gets very frustrating for like somebody who is just listening, right? So today, first of all, I would uh, like to wish you a very happy Republic Day, OK? to begin with, because that is, I think, primarily why we are here. And, uh, you know, with time, the demarcation between Independence Day and Republic Day has just gone away. So right now it's all about, you know, the sense of patriotism or nationalism or freedom that we have. But more or less, it is very different and very significant. This day is very significant, I'll tell you why. Because it brought into being one of the fundamental and most important documents that the country has seen, right? The Constitution of India. And why it is important in today's context or today's webinar's context is because this document actually holds the key to why we are here, right? As Kritika was also mentioning about Article 14 and 15, and I'm sure that all of you know about it. It's about equality, right? No matter who you are, from where you are, how you look, doesn't matter. You should have equal opportunities, right? The state should treat you same. Everybody should treat you the same. 
now this article also says that however there can be some classification when it is required right there has to be a nexus between why the classification is done and what is actually it's seeking to like achieve right now the topic today that i am dealing with is what are the best opportunities for women in the legal industry that also begets the question as to why are we making a differentiation between men and women right so you have to ponder on the question as to why the classification is necessary so how many times have you ever heard like you know people telling you that criminal being a criminal trial advocate is very difficult for women, for women right you must have heard this from like practicing advocates or maybe your seniors or anybody just about anybody now have you ever thought about it as to why why do women specifically not get into a lot of like criminal trials now the question is something that you must have like thought of and have like come up with your own answers but the answer to it is very simple okay now as women it is very difficult as it is for you to have a profession or to have a stand or authority in a male dominated society right let's not forget about the fact that it actually is it's all men and men who are actually taking the cake right so for you as a woman it becomes very difficult to survive at, as it is and when you get into something like a criminal trial where you have to deal with the scum of the society right and mostly men it gets difficult it does now to be very honest it does right now it's not like you have not seen women practicing as like you know criminal advocates or and actually they are doing very well so what is the required or you know what are the additional things that they need to do to survive in the system or to prove themselves a lot of things i would say so i when i started out as you know as an intern as an intern i actually worked with a criminal lawyer a female who was practicing primarily in the trial courts and she was the daughter of a judge she was doing very well in her own right and she was a very strong woman okay now when i say strong i don't say very muscular or you know good to look at or like if you look at her i you wouldn't get into a fight with her nothing like that she was a strong mental person right like mentally she was so strong that if she walks into a court room nobody would challenge her because she is a woman right how many of you can say that you can have the same kind of liberty or do you have the same authority right now it comes from a very personal space i guess so when you are in law school you really don't know what you are supposed to do right five years of law school and you are still undecided what am i supposed to do maybe i'll go for litigation maybe i'll go into judiciary you don't put into a lot of thought as to as a woman which is the profession i should choose right i think rarely we think about it because we think that okay because we have studied in a law school and on paper you can just do a, just about anything that a man does right but when you come into the profession you understand how important it is to make that choice thinking as a woman right i am not saying that you know as a woman you can't do certain things but i am saying that as a woman you have to have certain additional requirements in you as a person to excel what at what you are doing right now what are the most common options that women go for mostly women go into judiciary or the academia they will become professors or they'll go into policy research right and a lot of people would struggle to get into litigation per se and secondly i think there are a lot of niche fields which are actually explored by men more for example like cyber security data protection you must have heard about these things right so why is the case now i'll tell you why okay so the first day i walked into a court room this was my first appearance right and on the opposite side is a very senior advocate like a very reputed advocate and he's standing there and he is encouraging me to speak it the, the, uh, doesn't matter if you're a junior just speak up like put up your facts at cross i'm here to help you right and the moment i started actually arguing in front of the judge right it felt like i am not arguing with you know not in front of the judge but i'm arguing with the other person who is like a senior lawyer right and he has a very uh, Uh, how do you put it across he has a small corner space as if like you know because she's a girl i can just like you know subdue her i can just tell her that okay you don't know better and i do and that smog is going to stay 5 years down the line 10 years down the line no matter whenever you walk into the court room people are going to look at you and they are going to like make you question as to why you are you know even worthy to stand here and you have to prove it every day of your career you have to prove it as a woman because there is an inherent need for men to make you feel like you don't belong there okay now this might sound like very pessimistic or you know something which is actually very derogatory but it is the truth even in the corporate world if you go and if you are like you know working a lot of women actually do a, a lot better in the corporate world and i'll tell you why 
it's a joke okay don't take it seriously but corporate is basically litigation with a lot of money right so when you are dealing with like scum but the white collar scum your life get a little easier because nobody on your on your case is going to smock at you right but they would do it in other ways so coming back to circling back to the topic as to what are the best legal op- like you know options for women in the legal industry i would say that there is nothing that a woman can can do which a man does right but then again in a hierarchy of things that as to what you can choose as to what you can make your career in or what is going to like you know sustainable for you i think women have a different perspective to bring right if you are litigating you will have perspective which actually is sustainable in the long run you will look for reformation you look for as to why things are the way they are and what am i supposed to do to change it to make it easier for a lot of people here right as kritika was saying it's not just merely what is written down in the document but also how the society looks at it so when the 377 case happened you must have known like two very intelligent beautiful women menka goswami and arudhati tarji right both of these women were actually the pioneers of that case you wouldn't see that from a lot of men coming right why because women are here to make a change which actually makes life simpler or to bring in ways in which peace actually can prevail in the society right it might sound like a stretch but it is true as a woman i think you have a lot of perspective to bring into whatever job you are doing so no matter what you are choosing right you have to think in terms of where you are going to be heard it's about creating an impact in the long run like you know as a person you might think that if i have authority over somebody i can just get things done i can be a successful lawyer i can be a very good teacher but that's not the case the case is that once you understand that your presence is valued and whatever you are saying is creating an impact is where you are going to do really really well right so talking about the career options that i would say are like you know the best suited for women in this industry at least given what it actually is the society is you can definitely become like an in house counsel that is like one of the roles which is more suited for you know a sustainable growth because you are not regularly put to like an anxious state of you know middle dominance that is there secondly you can definitely go for judiciary because not only it gives you a source of authority and command over what is happening in the legal system right because you are sitting there you are pronouncing judgments and if you are going to into the higher judiciary there is nothing better than that because you are making change you are making real change right so and also you have like stable source of income and i think a lot of people actually struggle with that when they graduate right as to how am i supposed to survive on litigation like the small amount of money that i am getting right so if you want to make real change and if you are like somebody who really can't depend on your parents or if you are, don't have any financial stability of your own or you have taken a lot of loans right we all do so go for judiciary definitely one of the other things which is actually emerging in the field and for which a lot of my friends like female friends have done well in is policy research that is another field that you can venture into and eventually if you can and if you want to you can definitely go for like the legislative part of it right you can sit there you can bring your perspective your original ethical value system perspective and you can also make some change there litigation is something which you can definitely look at but then again i would say that if you are looking at litigation look at it from a 10 years perspective okay first two years you are going to struggle a lot next five years if you want to like continue with a like really good senior learn a lot and everything after that everybody wants to get independent at one point right do you have the mental bandwidth do you have the strength to you know go and stand up every day in front of court and fight your way through it if you can definitely go for it definitely there is nothing better than we have amazing female lawyers in the country like starting from mrs surab ji to like now right we have had a plethora of people who have made real impact and that is across you know like somebody as prominent as just just ring ruma paul as she was so all of them have actually propagated for women to get into practice because you can bring in a lot of change what is actually required in terms of how justice is served right when you are on this side of the bench right you actually can make a lot of difference to how law is actually being treated what the society needs right unlike men i think as i have already stated that you bring a lot of fresh perspective and you bring in a lot of reformation that is actually required not just for this gender but for the other gender as well right when we talk about equality we don't say that men should go down so that we can be at the equal level we say that we should come up so that you know everybody is in the same space so i think that is also one option that you can definitely definitely explore now to the unconventional parts as to what you can really do to make a 
impact on the society and to like make a name for yourself go into legal journalism okay now this is something which is very unexplored or maybe like it is explored in uh, tier one cities or like you know people who have a solid political background or a backing they get into legal journalism but if you are from a tier two city or a tier three city and you think that you want to make like you know a difference and you want to like make a name for yourself and you want to do something for the society and give back whatever you have received then go for legal journalism it is a very risky field it's going to be a very difficult field but then again it is something that is going to like push you into doing better every day right like media is like the fourth pillar as we all know right so at least women in law should contribute to that pillar so definitely go for that other than that you can definitely go for academia that is i think the most preferred amongst women these days because why not right we can just sit study like you know bake your own thing and then at the end of the day you're going and teaching students and you come back you have like a normal healthy life your mental health is good so that is also like one thing i would definitely like to explore so i think that is primarily one of the reasons why i moved away from litigation as a person because i think i need a very laid back life and i want to like even though i have to stay in the legal system but not directly right i want to write books i want to tell people that is what is my perspective on how law is and what it's supposed to be right so it doesn't matter where you are doing what okay i think the idea should be that whenever you are going out in the world remember that a lot of women before you okay lawyers non lawyers doesn't matter maybe even your mother or your sister they have put a lot of things across the line and they have sacrificed a lot okay to be where you are today to have the right to speak to go to a private school or maybe to just have the freedom of venturing out of your house to like get basic education right so i think that is something that we should never forget as women as to like what sacrifices have actually gone behind us being here present and speaking up for what we think is right right so no matter where you go don't compromise on these things stand up for yourself right and as long as you're doing that i think in the long run you will actually do something which is at least good for one person and that's good enough i think at the end of your life if you stay one life or you know made a difference in one person's life you have done a lot okay and that is what you should be looking at money and everything i think we all know that it's very important for sustenance and you should definitely look for it i'm not going to say name don't be like you know be so ideological that you don't have a sustainable source of income but while you are doing that in the background do something or maybe as a primary source of your income you should do something which actually brings you that fulfillment that you've actually given back to those women who have fought for you okay and that should be the idea as a young generation i think a lot of us are digressing from that idea somehow because we take it for granted but you know like with the current trend of shutting anybody up who doesn't agree with the government or who doesn't agree with the ruling power right tomorrow it could be you tomorrow it could be a woman who is speaking up and it's not appreciated right it could be any of your sisters who belongs to a like different community or a caste and they are not getting the right to speak up so don't take this freedom or this liberty the or the education that you have received for granted okay do something about it while you can and any time you can like speak up like even if it's like you know a lot of us frown about social media activism so much as to why is this woman every day she comes online and she posts about female rights or why is this woman like you know every day she talks about how women are supposed to be treated because it's important right you wake up every day and you face some kind of discrimination or some kind of like you know injustice while you're walking down the roads while also you're in court rooms right you see a lot of people treating you differently just because you are a woman and you are what 25 26 20 doesn't matter right you shouldn't be that's not what like the constitution says that's not what we are supposed to practice that's not what the state is supposed to be aimed at so as a person as a woman if you ever get the chance to say that no this is incorrect open your mouth and say that okay you're going to be a motor mouth you're going to be called out a loud mouth or whatever they want to call you doesn't matter you as a person you belong to this world and you have as much as rights as men do so i think a topic like you know what are the best professions for like women in the legal industry shouldn't come after like 10 years 10 years out down the line we should be talking about what are the best things that women excelled at and you know they did it because they could right it shouldn't be like this i don't think this is like a justified topic after like what 60 something years of independence it doesn't even matter like we sh- shouldn't be talking about this thing right but we still are because it's a significant problem as much as we don't want to address it as much as men want to take offense that oh i am not like that i am not like all men right 
count me out but no if you are, if you are there and you are not speaking up you are part of the problem right so don't tell us as to what we are supposed to do and not supposed to do and actually like pave a path for like everybody's collective growth and see no matter where you go i'll tell you what women men whoever is in power okay is going to disagree with you and most of them are going to disagree with you whenever you talk about sustainable growth okay or you talk about you know bringing in equality justice or your ideas of like ideological justice as it is written in the books or the constitution and sometimes we'll feel like you know this is not the right profession for me or maybe i should like go into something which is softer where i can be kinder and eventually become a tree okay i'm just going to stay there and nourish my kids or take take care of the family and one step every step you take back from where you are standing today okay you are actually going towards becoming a tree i don't say it's a bad thing it's a great thing to become a tree right but when you become a tree also understand that if you are becoming a palm tree you are actually you know cutting down the growth of other trees around you okay so never ever become a palm tree in this profession i think that is the only suggestion or the only perspective that i want to get give to you and i think in law school what happens is that your education doesn't really start or end when you're in law school it's after you graduate okay once you have completed your graduation that is where your learning experience comes so in the first 5 years at least make it a point that you are learning everything okay make a choice when you're ready as to what profession you actually want to continue or get into in the long run okay but for the first 5 years get an overview of everything specialize in something when you are ready it's not like okay i have graduated today i want to become a tax lawyer okay you have become a tax lawyer but the gst came in now your profession is like you are nowhere right your entire thing is changing you have to adapt again so why not give yourself the option or you know the chance to do whatever you can do whenever you are ready to right so don't take it from me don't take it from xyz person as to what you are supposed to do make your own choice sit down one day think where i can do best what is good for me not for anybody else just for me and if i am good in what i am doing am i actually making a change in anybody else's life if you think you have the answer you know what to do okay that is what is best for you in the legal industry so yeah that is i think what is my two cents about today's topic yeah so thank you so much for having me i think it angela was the only person who was listening to it very intently because i couldn't see anybody else so if you could kindly turn your videos on it would be really nice to see you all as to who are the people who are attending today i don't know Nobody? if they are comfortable or not but i am here to <laughs> listen you very carefully so thank you so much ma'am for uh, sharing your thoughts and views on the topic and it was very entertaining and it was very inspiring for us to listen to you so now we are moving to the next part of our session that is a qa session and i would like to ask three questions from both of you related to your career and your profession so firstly i would like to ask from pritika ma'am so Yeah, ma'am, are you here with us? Okay, let me just check. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Ma'am, I would like to ask you, like, what attracted you towards this profession? Like, how you ended up realizing that you will choose this career as your profession? Ah, uh, okay. So that's an interesting, um, I mean, question and story behind it. So, yeah. uh, well, basically, I mean, I was a science student until class twelve, and there was a point in time until when I wanted to become a doctor, uh, which was kind of quite, you know. Uh, yeah. strongly there in my mind i wanted to be a doctor but then there came a time i remember um, there used to be a lot of these advertisements about uh, consumer protection consumer rights um, and i remember seeing them you know quite often on uh, tv back then and um, somehow you know it just made me feel that um, it's important to know your rights and uh, as a lawyer you know there is something about knowing your rights knowing what you you know what 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 is right wrong and rights duties responsibilities lots of those kind of things you know and there's something very empowering about um, you know just knowing and also upholding your rights and of course then help you know and then a step forward if you're a lawyer then you're helping people um, uphold their rights 
Um, and I think that is where that switch happened. That somehow I felt that um, I think being a lawyer could, uh, you know, could could have an impact in terms of, um, you know, what you can do for people, for yourself, for the society at large. Um, and I think that's where that switch happened. That okay, I thought okay, maybe you know, maybe I I could look at becoming a lawyer. And yeah, so that's how I, of course, I ended up being a lawyer. And I think. Um, one thing which I want to mention is, you know, like, um, I mean, I uh, have an elder sister, so we're two sisters, and somehow, you know, we were neither were we raised in a way that wherein we were very gender conscious. Um, we were just raised as any normal kids, you know, just just two kids of parents, and yeah, doing whatever we wanted to do. So I think, uh, as a lawyer, you should, or, I mean, not just as a lawyer, but as any 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 person you should never you know pay so much attention to your gender you know just just um because the more attention you pay there is more reason for you to think why you should be doing a certain thing why you should not be doing a certain thing why you should be in a certain place why you shouldn't be in a certain place or what people are thinking about you if you're in a place or if you're not in a place etc etc so um i think that that doubt comes up when you start thinking about those things so you just have to um you know i think i think that um gender consciousness if it becomes prohibitory in any way i think that is something which is the bigger problem um you know you're just a person who wants to pursue a profession and who wants to you know do whatever part you know kind of um i mean sort of uh, be a part of whatever vertical of that profession and that's that you know there's nothing more to it there's nothing less to it so it's got nothing you know i think that thought about or thinking about uh, gender roles and gender perceptions i think that is something which we really need to you know stop overthinking about yeah yeah okay so ma'am my next question to you is like according to you what two laws you think are best for women and they are really working for them in terms of their safety or maybe they are helping them in their education or maybe to make to explore to new opportunities uh, what two laws you think they are really helping for them uh, two laws that are helping women okay one i would say has to definitely be the equality before law and the equal opportunity of okay, you know i'll kind of club it together um that the constitution guarantees because uh, that is sort of you know um like the the overarching principles on the basis of which any other legislature is carved out so what the constitution provides that about equality before law and equal opportunity irrespective of your you know race gender caste creed color you know those kind of things so i think those provisions are definitely um one that are that are important the uh um i mean i can say the other could be you know um so the other could be laws arising from those kind of provisions so whether you we talk about you know property rights or whether we talk about maternity benefits or equal remuneration i mean that's you know those are kind of arising from there the other i would say is uh, laws affecting the you know the personal rights of women and you know when i when i say personal rights i mean um rights about bodily autonomy also you know both both i mean so one is your autonomy in terms of what you want to do in life um you know and you getting you having a society which is obviously um giving you an equal platform um and the other is um, just having the autonomy from a more in a more um, physical sense of the word so basically um i mean to have an inclusive society also means tolerance for everything and you know tolerance for different views for different ideas so just i think i think laws which give you more autonomy i think mm-hmm. those are the kind of laws which have an impact on women's rights yeah 
Okay, completely understood, ma'am. So, ma'am, my last question to yeah. you is like, do you think that uh, a law should be made for women that will help in their safety measures, especially in safety? Because we all know that women face uh, many kind of violence, maybe on the street or maybe on their homes. So, do you think a law should be made for them that will definitely help to uh, secure, to feel secure in themselves and to just feel uh, happy in the environment when they go out or they when when they go out on the street at late at night they feel like maybe there will be something violence that will happen to them so what safety measure you think that should be made for a woman that will help in them in future uh, right yeah. so uh, okay interestingly i just uh, you know right before this webinar i actually i came across this small um, you know video which has been created by the mumbai police Mm -hmm. um, they have something called the Nirbhaya, um, Nirbhaya Police or Nirbhaya Helpline or something of that sort, which is basically for women and their safety. Uh, you know, I don't know, some of you might have seen it. And if not, then you can have a look at it later. Um, and uh, basically, there were, they, you know, they were showing instances, um, instances where different women in different settings were, yeah, Nirbhaya Squad, somebody said, yeah. Yeah. Different settings where, women there were you know there were young women girls um, who were feeling a bit um, unsettled or a bit you know had some fear when they were out on their own you know there was this girl who was on a on her scooty there was somebody who was walking and you know just at night basically so uh, i mean of course you know you as as any girl yeah we do feel that kind of a stress when we are um, out on, you know, out, out um, whether it's late at night or we're just alone or we are, you know, um, in areas which are not very well, um, well lit, well populated, et cetera, et cetera, those kind of things. So, um, yeah, I mean, having that kind of, uh, um, you know, like a support system from the um, enforcement agencies is definitely going to help. But what I also um, very strongly feel about is that, it's not just that, you know, the, the, you can't just always have uh, or rely upon protecting yourself. You also need to keep working on changing the society. So um, as much as a law, let us say if a law comes in, which says that, okay, you, you know, we need to have like whatever protection squads and those kind of things for women. Um, you also need to sensitize the society about why, um, you know, why or how they should behave around all, all segments of people. Yes. As, again, as I said, uh, you know, while talking that it's not just about women, it's, you know, it's not just this specific focus on one gender. It's about A, any gender, B, people who do not conform to a gender, but just having a more tolerant society just having a society which is inclusive, which is tolerant, and which uh, respects the personal space of every individual, which respects um, the personal choices of every individual. Um, and I think that is what is going to really bring in the change um, that we want, because just having police monitoring somebody, you know, that's not changing the mindset of people. So we need, um, the mindset to be changed and that is what is more important yeah okay thank you ma'am and thank you so much for answering the questions very honestly and now i would like to invite kritika ma'am for answering the questions so abhi pipsha ma'am sorry yeah Yeah, hi. Yeah, hi, ma'am. So, ma'am, my first question to you is like, as I asked from Kritika, ma'am, so how, what attracted yeah. you towards this profession? Like, how you ended up realizing that you will choose this profession as your career? Mine is actually a very funny story. So, I was in eighth grade and I picked up this book called The Undomestic Goddess by Sophie Kinsella. Okay. It talks about this uh, really smart lawyer at a law firm who is struggling, like, who is working really, really hard. And then she gets into kind of trouble and she runs away and she becomes like a house help at a very suburban, uh, you know, house. And eventually along the way, she realizes that it, it was actually the partners of the law firm who 
put her through all this and then she does some basic research and she gets out of the situation but then eventually she has to uh, choose between uh, being a partner we can becoming an equity partner at a firm and the love of her life okay and i thought interesting very interesting looks like something you know i want in my life to happen and i think i just manifested that and i was also like a science student that my parents wanted me to become a doctor like every other indian parent right but then i went to like i just protested i was like no all my life has just been going to like debates and organizing campaigns getting into political campaigns not for this because i think as a lawyer i do better so i could stand for myself and i thought that it's not the practice of law that actually you know brought me to this profession but i just wanted to study law like i think that is something which every lawyer is going to tell you that no matter how old you are even if you are in your 60s you are still law student okay and that is something which attracted me in the first place because it's a learning curve that never stops every other day something new is happening and you get to learn and you get to stand up for like others and yourself okay and i think that is something which has attracted me to this profession okay so thank you so much ma'am my ma'am my next question to is you like the like the topic was what can be the best career options for women in legal industry so yeah. what qualities and skills you think a woman should already have in her when she wanted to enter a legal industry that will help her her to uh, achieve something or to achieve a goal what qualities or skills you think that she should have already in her like maybe you, you have that yeah i think you should be unapologetically unapolog- stubborn but like you have to be very stubborn yeah because if you are not then somebody is going to like you know pin you down and yeah. like that's not a good thing to have right but when you say like stubborn this is actually it's a negative connotation as to why you're a stubborn person but i think this profession actually demands you to be very stubborn and secondly i think you, if you are a very uh, mentally strong person as i've already said right when i say mentally strong there are a lot of attributes to it that you should be very patient you should be like a good listener right you should be able to listen to other people because while you are even arguing in court or listening to your client it may go on for hours right and you have to have the patience to listen to other people to put your points across it can't be just i want to speak and i want to have my turn right so it takes a lot of patience from you and even like day to day operations it will actually require you to have to be a very patient person and other than that i think if you are a good uh, speaker that also counts right no matter where you are no matter what like you know layer or whatever like tangent of this profession you want to get into you have to be a good speaker right and if you are like developing your writing skills and everything like i'm talking about like professional things at least professionally you should be like able to put your point across in writing and while speaking as well so these are the things i think you should have to make a good career in this okay so ma'am my last question to you like as you mentioned that women may be faced more obstacles and problem as compared to a men in this industry so have you ever personally yeah. felt like this like any experience or any incidents that you have thought that like, maybe they have done this to me also and i have i have also realized or experiences in my career a lot of instances actually but um, primarily this is something which actually took me by surprise so um, i practice in delhi i used to so a lot of our clients are from up bihar right because yeah. supreme court practice primarily and a lot of people come through connections so one fine day a very reputed industrialist he walked in and he asked me as to where my senior was and i said he is not available so you can just like you know tell me what your situation is and mm-hmm. i have been asked to like take your briefing mm-hmm. and he just walks past me and he goes to an intern a male intern and he tells the male intern that mm, i think the senior is not available so do you want to take down the facts of what is happening with me and i just got like so pissed off and i just walked to him and i asked him to leave because i just told him that i don't think you think i am qualified enough to take your briefing and i don't think this intern here is going to do justice to your case at least in terms of like what are supposed to be like you know the pertinent questions to be asked to you so i asked him to leave and he left and then i went and i told my senior that this is what happened today so a client just walked in and they just like ignored me because i was a woman and this happens as much as you want to like think that it doesn't happen it happens and so the person comes in the next day and my senior was a very kind gracious person so he just so he as this uh, client to sit down and then he is like this is abhishek she is my colleague and she is going to like handle your case and so forth okay so this person has no option but to actually like give me his case because my senior has asked him to 
but i think that also counts because you know as long as you don't have people standing up for you even if you think that it's not required you don't want to take a man's help but you should when you can and if somebody is actually doing it willfully and with a place of like respect for you definitely do it like that and i have received a lot of help from like you know my seniors my colleagues who are actually men and who have actually stood up for me in such circumstances so yeah yeah we actually face actually everybody faces and everybody have bad days and good days in their career so thank you so much ma'am for answering my questions very honestly and now i would like to add that we have one more founder of our society and he is rj weber he works in uh, fever fm so uh, now before we wrap up i would like to ask from both of you like what message you would like to give to our society so ma'am please abhibhasha ma'am starting from you so my message to like every woman like lawyer non lawyer a child or you know a grown up would be that this is a society where you really need to like fight for your right okay and i think every moment that you are awake and you are breathing is something that you should do and not forget about it as i said like don't take this freedom for granted right you don't know when it's going to be taken away and you don't know if you are speaking of what better things you can actually bring about right so definitely do strive for that and i think that is the only thing as a person like it's not even about being a man or woman i think as a person who is like a sentient being right you are different from every other sentient being because human beings are called you know homo sapiens for a reason because there is a difference between sentient and sapiens like what quality you have as a sapient being is something which other beings don't have right a crab will go out and it will pull down other crabs you don't have to do that so become a better person and as i said every like breath of your life just do something better for others also okay thank you so much ma'am now i would like to ask from pritika ma'am yeah uh okay so um, i mean the only thing i have to say is i think while we have to be conscious um of you know whether it's our gender or whether it's our place in society but i think we should not be obsessive about it um and just you know just take it as it comes and then um i mean i i, I don't see a reason why certain professions or certain aspects of professions have to be for one gender or the other um it's all in your mind and uh, and as they also say ignorance is bliss so if there are any naysayers that you come across so just ignore them and that's that's the only thing that that you need to you know do but other than that i think i think this obsession with um i think this obsession in our minds with gender or gender specific issues um unless you know i, I remember i remember reading something somewhere uh, that true equality sort of will come in when you know when we stop saying that oh so and so is the first female whatever whatever um, you know i mean yeah okay so and so became a uh, say a judge of the supreme court i mean do we say so and so is the um, you know a male judge of the supreme court no we don't so then i mean yeah i mean it's important to talk about achievements of different people different genders and everything but it's also important to not make them so apparent i mean the the um the distinction in society will go away only if we let go of that distinction and if we don't choose to let go of that distinction i think it won't go away in fact i remember um, you know some 2 uh, 3 years back there was uh, there was this um, sort of i mean it, it came to light um, a, a conversation on twitter and uh, this was regarding sanya mirza and i think uh, somebody had said that uh, uh, sanya mirza had said or somebody had said that okay she is the um, you know a tennis champion or something of that sort you know she's she's uh, one of the tennis champions and then there was some man who you know who thought it was necessary to say that 
oh yeah but okay she's the tennis champion in the women's double category so sanya mirza shot back saying that yeah i mean that's obvious because that's the only category i play and so obviously i am going to be a champion in the women's uh, doubles category but but do you say that oh roger federer is a champion in the men's singles category you just call him a champion or anybody else so you know why this um obsession over over classification and you know over making it a point or making it like a big deal i mean it only once these things stop becoming a big deal that you know that we can actually um, take them to be a normal so yeah i mean why there oh five women five judges became five women became judges of the supreme mm-hmm. court but do they say 13 men became judges of the supreme court no they yeah. just talk about those five women so i think uh, this over obsession of whether and irrespective whether it's of gender whether it's of caste whether it's of any any kind of distinction um you know sometimes in a bit to stop a discrimination we end up kind of uh, you know just making uh, that discrimination or that distinction so much a part of our vocabulary which is not needed so i think this obsession with uh, these things has to stop in our own minds and yeah i mean there's nothing to think about you know when i when i you know when i work with any with a, with a client with a you know whether it's litigation or anything now i don't think that oh, okay i am a female lawyer you know i am just a lawyer right so yeah. because it's not in my mind that okay there is a difference because i am a female lawyer versus a male lawyer i am just a lawyer i may be a good lawyer great lawyer exceptional lawyer brilliant lawyer you know those adjectives could be there but the fact that i'm a female lawyer should not be defining me um or my choices for that matter so yeah that's that's the only thing that i hope that um, you know we we see as a change um, in the society yeah ma'am so thank you so much ma'am for joining us today and it the i genuinely feel that this webinar was very educational and informative for all of us and on behalf of surgeon welfare society please accept our sincere appreciation for your outstanding speech and we are grateful for the time and effort you took to share your thoughts and views on the topic so now to our lovely audience thank you so much for joining us today and being so attentive throughout the session and last but not the least i would like to thank our management team and staff without whom this session wouldn't be this successful so have a wonderful day everyone thank you so much for joining us today thank you so much thank, thank you. you ma'am thank you ma'am